Hello, well in this film I'm going to be making a lazy kate. And a lazy kate is for holding bobbins. So these are my spinning wheel bobbins that I made. They're for holding the bobbins while you want to ply wool. So as I've spun this wool straight off the wheel, it's a single ply. I want to make it a two ply wool. So I'll fill up two bobbins with the wool and then I'll put them on the lazy kate and unroll them both at the same time as I wind them together onto a new third bobbin, giving me a two-ply wool. So Lazy Kate construction is really very easy. It's basically just a stand with some metal rods going through it. So here's my rough plan, and the bobbins will literally just sit between these, where there'll be metal rods between these two uprights, and it will hold three bobbins in total. I've got some old tent pegs for the um, metal bits, other bits of junky metal and then the wood i've got a few bits just rough sawn straight off a wood miser but it's a bit of larch i'll cut a couple of uprights and get planing so i'm just going to round off the corners on this plank so i'm using one of my bobbins as a little guide to make the rounding off circles Well, that's rounded off the edges, which is all good. Um, just to say, with my bandsaw at the moment, I've got a dust extractor connected up. So I've added this dust extraction port underneath my bandsaw table, and I've popped a film up about doing this. Quite a simple mod, but it basically draws all the sawdust away from the blade, and it's been really good. I, my shed doesn't get as dusty as it used to. That's just rounded off the edges. I'll plane up this plank. I've just popped another bit of plank of this through on the saw bench, and I have now got two uprights, which I'll also plane up. I haven't trimmed these to length yet. So a bit of wood planing next. I've got my little Stanley nine and a half, I think it is. Been really good this one. I bought it when I well, it was really quite young, and I had to buy a new blade as I sort of got through the old one but it's a very nice plane very pleased with this one and then i'll just get an old um stanley number four in here if you're wondering why my vice is golden i decided after 60 years of woodworking it was time to change its color so i had the gold paint out on another job and painted it gold oops and i think it's gone uh, well, seized up on a quick release a bit there we are Anyway, it's quite a nice old vice, that one. One of his old record quick release jobs. So first up, the uprights. Mm, planes quite nicely. I do like the sound of the plane on the wood. One of the things my dad always told me, and it's funny how you pick up things and it almost without realizing it, keep your plane on its side and then you don't damage your blade. So one of my friends milled this wood from one of the trees that he has, which is very kind of him, it's very nice. Got a nice colour to it, a uh, nice grain. So my little nine and a half plane is quite a nice one for doing the rounding off. I've rather gone off using um, some of the power tools, to be honest. I do use them for some of the more arduous work, but I do like using hand tools. There's something very nice about it. So I'll whip round these, there they are, a before and an after if you like. I'm lucky my base does just about fit my vice jaws. Well I do love it, you take a, a slice off and suddenly you go from being all rough to being lovely and smooth and you see all the grain, it is nice. Thank you. 
Do the same for the other side. One of the things I do quite like about steel bottom planes is um, where you've got a bit of tannin in the wood, you get like a black mark. So if you're particularly if you're working oak, but I notice with this, I'm getting a nice black mark off the sole of my plane. And it helps you sort of work out where you need a, a bit more planing. But obviously the black mark is left on the high spots. too bad. Grain very slightly changes direction in one point but we can live with that. So just pop around the edges. So I'll take a little chamfer off the round the top edge and probably get away with this plane for that. I'll clean this up with the smaller little block plane but um, I'll Across the end grain, it's easier to use the little block plane, obviously because of its lower angle of blade. So it's not so aggressive. You look at two, those two planes, you can probably see that the block plane has a far lower angle than the number four smoothing plane. Now, you could obviously do all this shaping around on the router table, but I don't like all the dust and the noise. So I'm quite enjoying using my little planes for this. Get a lovely smell of the wood wafting up. Try and clean those a bit. Be careful of the grain direction here, otherwise it will all go completely nuts. So there you are, two uprights on an axle with a bobbin. <laughs> Just need to fix these uprights into the base. The uprights are going to be subject to quite a bit of pressure. So what I've done is I've marked out on here a little area which I will drill out and I'll sink each of the upright posts into the base plank like that I know it will be a nice strong fit so I'll drill and chisel those out next so there you are I've drilled out the waist I'll now get a nice sharp chisel and take those holes out right by the way if you have a lathe very easy to make a mallet. This one's a lignum vitae head, it's just an ash handle, but it's quite a nice sort of mallet to hold. Right. First hole crudely done. I will carry on and I'll obviously finish them a bit more carefully by pressing with my hands only. There we are. It's quite easy with a smaller chisel to get in and just clean up the hole a bit. So that's what I'm doing now, just trying to Make sure I've kept these sides nice and square and getting it all nicely cleaned up. A bit around there. I'm just using ordinary white PVA glue, it's quite straightforward. Let's move around on this. Spread that around there. And then we'll just drive that in. While that's gluing I'm just going to pop 
my little metal bars through. I wasn't around though, I was able to do that first really. Oh. So I'm just rounding the ends of the metal bars, just to get any little burrs off from where they were cut. Again, just a final sort of check for all of this is fairly square. So I'm just quickly going around with the tri square, so it doesn't seem too bad. I'll let that dry now and I will then probably make these holes a tiny bit bigger. Well there you have it, one completed lazy cake and I may give it perhaps a bit of varnish or something just to seal it once it is all dried. But um, yeah the bobbins spin fine on there so I think that should be all perfectly good. I've loosened these up a little bit and it's all ready for a wool plying session. I've made it slightly wider in case you're wondering because I will probably be getting some larger bobbins at some stage on a larger wheel <laughs> but that will be another story. Well, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next film <laughs> whatever that might be. Bye for now.